Hi, welcome back. This is Dr. Carl Goldcamp. Today we're going to go pretty deep about something pretty broad. And I think you're going to find it rather surprising that what you can do to change your life today. Okay, what we're going to talk about are the top five nutrient deficiencies that age you fast, shorten your life unnecessarily. So this is in essence the opposite of getting younger, of epigenetic reverse aging. This is about getting older unnecessarily, which we now are doing as a culture. Maybe not you personally, but probably you personally. Let's get started. Okay, so what are these? What are these nutrient deficiencies? These are the questions we're going to answer. What are these nutrient deficiencies? How do they accelerate aging? Why does this happen? And who's most at risk? The top five most harmful deficiencies to get right at it are omega-3, so call it fish oils, if you will, vitamin B12, vitamin B6, folate, and vitamin D. Okay, vitamin B9, otherwise then known as folate, is a big, big deal. So folate is an essential nutrient that usually occurs as folate versus folic acid. We're going to get into that in a second, i.e. it's come from food, dietarily, from food, not a supplement. Listen to that, not a supplement. So it's not in your Cheerios, it's not added to your milk, it's not added to your cookies, whatever it is you're having. We're talking about real whole foods. That's where you get folate. It serves many important functions in your body. For example, it plays a crucial role in cell growth and the formation of DNA. We'll hear a lot about that. Low levels of folate are associated with increased risk of several health conditions, including elevated homocysteine. High homocysteine levels have been associated with an increased risk of heart disease and stroke. Birth defects, low, low folate levels in pregnant women are linked to birth abnormalities such as neurotube defects, spina bifida, cleft lip, and autistic spectrum disorders. So anything from full out autism, Asperger's, and even dyslexia, those are all parts of what they call the spectrum. Cancer risk, Poor levels of folate are also linked to increased cancer risk. For these reasons, supplementing with vitamin folate is common. Fortifying food with this nutrient is mandatory in many countries, including the United States and Canada. What are the best sources of folate? Oh, it's liver! It's liver! So this is a, a list from NIH, which actually has a pretty good list of, and we're going to compare it. Best sources of dietary folate are liver, beef liver. And we'll go on a chronometer and take a look at that, but people don't eat liver anymore. So they put themselves voluntarily at risk of being folate deficient. So these are, why is cancer rates going up? Why are all these other conditions going up? One of the reasons, and nothing is just one thing. I mean, you could sort of say environmental toxins. You could say it's side effects of various medications. Those are correct. But however, when you look at What's the difference between now and 70 or 100 years ago? Hardly anybody has liver in their diet. And so therefore, they're not going to get the things that liver was something had many times a week. You're not going to get the folate. You're not going to get some of these other things. And look at the difference when people go, oh, I can get it from spinach. Well, spinach is maybe half, as amount, half the amount of beef liver. And also, it's a different form, by the way. So the best sources of B6, which was one of the other five deficiencies. Here we get from NIH. Well, beef liver is the highest form and the best form of B6. Uh-oh, this, this, this doesn't look good, does it? The richest source of vitamin B6 include fish, beef liver, and other organ meats. In the United States, adult obtain most of their dietary B6 from fortified cereals. This was exactly the point. We've shifted away from animal products, healthy animal products, to fortified cereals, the Captain Crunch, the cookies that we have, and we think we're getting good nutrition because it says B vitamins added, folate added. In the mid-90s, folate was being added, but it was folic acid. So these supplemented foods, these fortified cereals, were, put, were, were putting you at risk for various cancers because they were folic acid. Okay, now B12. What is the best source of B12? It's liver. It's liver. Sorry. By the way, and here's how high up liver. I am spoiled. Judy does make these egg 
uh, wraps, and this is liver. And what you can't see, I do add a little pepper uh, jelly. There's no sugar in any in there. It's from our gardens. We make it. Um, it's delicious. It is so delicious. But just notice the number one source from the NIH, which is a conservative reference, is beef liver. Bonk. And number two is clams. So I want you to see the seafood orientation here because that's our ancestral diet that has finally been saying, you know, how is it that all these goodies are from seafoods? I said beef liver, but I could have also said fish liver. That's coming up. Then there's fish, uh, nutritional yeast. That's a bit artificial. It doesn't exist in the world without it being made. And then there's salmon. Here it says Atlantic. It's like you really can't get Atlantic salmon wild anymore unless you're on the uh, Scandinavia, Europe. Okay, clams are the second best source of B12. Lived on the Cape for five years, and these are quahogs. These are actually cherry salmon, which are baby quahogs. Well, they were good. The only difference that most people don't have clams, and most people don't have this kind of, uh, don't eat clams on a regular basis. It's like a treat, and it was a treat for us. Uh, it's because it's fairly high carb as well. I mean, you, in essence, are eating the stomachs of the clams. And so for those on a ketogenic diet, on the carb portion, if they're trying to keep their carbs down, um, it's kind of like nuts in the sense that you can't eat that many of them because you'll exceed your carbs, but they are very nutritious. So yes, that speaks to mussels. Yes, that speaks to oysters. Yes, that speaks to steamers. Am I missing one? I don't know. Groups at risk for B12 deficiency or inadequacy. Older adults, they, they absorb more poorly. Individuals, pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is an autoimmune in which it affects the gut. We'll say without getting too much into it, because it affects the gut, especially in the stomach, you can't release this thing called intrinsic factor and therefore you can't absorb B12 and you become B12 deficient called pernicious anemia. Um, individuals with gastrointestinal disorders, pretty much the same. Um, it's most famous for celiac disease and then Crohn's disease, but celiac disease, which is a is a reaction to the casein in wheats uh, and breads and so on and so forth. It causes um, basically your inability to absorb B12. Individuals who have gastrointestinal surgery, of course. Vegetarians. You hear so much about vegetarians. Vegetarians cannot get adequate amount of B12. So they will then become B12 deficient and suffer the consequences we've already talked about. Vegans who consume no animal products and vegetarian who consume some animal products, i.e. dairy products or both, but not meat have a higher risk of developing B12 deficiency because natural food sources of B12 are limited to animal foods. And of course, infant of vegan women. Um, most vegans, I don't know if you know this, or most Hindu are vegans. And so they have incurred through the religious sort of orientation, if you will, of their diet, a permanent deficiency animal population wide. And consequently, they have outrageous rates of arthritis and heart disease and so on and so forth. So it's not just in India, but it's anybody who is practicing Hinduism relative to the dietary limitations that were uh, historically sort of continued. Okay, vitamin D. You know, it's not all about the sun because when you think about uh, the Inuits, the Eskimos, that they don't have much in the way of sun. And in the winter, their long days, they don't have a lot of sun, enough to stimulate their vitamin D production. So it's really more about a dietary absorption. I know we talk about it in the United States anyway. Oh, you need to be out in the sun for X amount. That helps. But guess what? After tracking so many adults in, in our care and clients, you realize no matter how much time they're outside, what about the skin cancer approach? You know, Yes, they can time it for 15 minutes during the day. That is better than nothing. And there's a health benefit to that. Absolutely, of course. However, they usually don't get their vitamin D levels up until they start supplementing. And you can supplement with vitamin D, of course, and I'm not going there. But you also can do what they did a generation or two or three ago. And that was to take eat either fish livers, like the Inuits, or take fish liver oil, like they did back in the early 1900s and before, but they don't do that anymore. Okay, so anyway, there you go. We have cod liver oil is the number one. Trout, fish, fish, and mushrooms, yeah, hardly much. 
very little in the way of, but after that, it's really minuscule. So it's cod liver oil. So what does it have to do with bone health, obviously, uh, muscle function? Look at all these cancers that are associated with vitamin D deficiency, breast cancer, colorectal, lung, pancreatic, prostate. What about multiple sclerosis? That clearly is associated with sun. The higher latitudes you go, whether you're going in the southern hemisphere or the northern hemisphere, the greater the incidence of multiple sclerosis, MS. Depression, seasonal affecting disorder, of course, type 2 diabetes, and weight loss, all about vitamin D dis deficiency. Now I'm going to show you how you can look at some of these things, how I like to look at it. Here's how you can actually look at the food you're eating. And so here's how, this is Chronometer, and it's a free app you can do online, and there's others. Um, this is what I use, and it's good enough for me and our clients and so on. But so here I just put down, you know, what is in raw egg yolk? We're going to talk about that in a second. And beef liver, or here's another list, calves liver versus beef liver. Beef liver is the best, by the way, in terms of nutrition. Uh, some people think calves liver it tastes better and so on. Um, let's say you're you're comparing since we've talked about clams, clams raw, cooked, oysters, mussels, fish, and, and you want to go to um, where are they in B12? Look at all that B12. As we said, it's the second best source of B12 are mollusks, are clams in general. And so you say of those, which is better? Well, we have the winner is mussels. Mussels are the highest of B12 of all of them, and then it's cooked clams, and then, so there you go. Now we can say, what about their omega-3 versus omega-6? Look at that, they're high in omega-3. Uh, of course that, we know that. They're like fish, they're seafood. Okay, so now let's go and look at um, liver. What about liver? Now let's go liver and egg yolk, here we go. Let's go down and say, well, look at that. We have, see this little box that jumps up? We see beef liver is the most of the B12 and a little bit comes from egg yolk, but now we go down to folate, and folate is still mostly from beef liver, it's twice as much as egg, egg yolk, but you put those together and you have both those bases covered solidly. What about the combination of omega-3? Omega-3 is, the egg yolks has more omega-3 than beef liver and so on, but this is how you can check in terms of what are you eating, what does that look like? Primarily just think about the basics, the <laughs> liver, the egg yolk, uh, clams or mollusks if you want to look at that, but pretty basic stuff. Hi, I just wanted to mention if this is something you're interested in, finding the nutritional value of food in general, relative to deficiencies, relative to various chronic diseases that we have, you really would appreciate this following video over here and a whole series that I put together about that. Not just about epigenetics, but about nutrients and about food. Something we all need to take responsibility for, our own health. Till then.